Well, hello, Horizon Cruisers and future Horizon Cruisers. I'm guessing that's why you're here today to get my take on what I liked and didn't like on the Carnival Horizon. Now, it's been just over a week since I got off the Carnival Horizon, my wife and I, Anita, and um, have a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about, uh, a lot of the things we liked and, and some of the things that we didn't like. And we'll do that right after this. I just can't get away from a good time. All right, so let's start off with the cruise director. And the cruise director on both sailings for myself, the I, I went for 14 days from, what was it, July 23rd all the way through August 6th of 2022 was Donkey. Now, Donkey is considered, among most people within the Carnival Cruise community, to be one of the top cruise directors amongst the cruise directors throughout the Carnival fleet. Now, I will say that um, like I have cruised with Donkey many times before, and I haven't gotten an opportunity to really meet him uh, personally. Now, um, I'm going to give Donkey a like, and I'm going to do that because of the people that have communicated to me. Their interactions with him have been very positive. So Donkey does get a like from me. Now, here is the one exception that I have with Donkey, okay? Um, I've cruised recently uh you know for two weeks with lee mason uh coming off the carnival mardi gras and now he'll be the inaugural cruise director of the carnival celebration i also have cruised with kendall file kendall fire for four different occasions and let me tell you the difference between those two those two are also obviously considered at the very top of the carnival uh cruise director food chain if you will and here's the thing when i'm on a cruise with them I don't have to go looking for them to have an interaction or experience them. Somehow, some way, no matter how big the ship, they find me. I, I don't know whether it's just because they're constantly walking all over the ship or whatever else like that, but I will tell you this. In two weeks on the Carnival Mardi Gras, which is an XL class ship, Lee crossed paths with me just walking around the ship without intention four different times, just by accident, within a two week period. Okay, when I was on the Carnival Vista last summer for three weeks on three different occasions, I couldn't even tell you how many times Kindle Fire crossed paths with me. Um, just walking by, would stop, have a quick, ch quick, quick chat, things like that. Now I do realize that on a lot of these cruise ships, you can have up to 6,000 passengers. So to have that personal interaction with each and every one of them is nearly impossible. But somehow, some way, those two cruise directors, which again, might be considered the top male cruise director in the Carnival fleet and the top female cruise director in the Carnival fleet, somehow, some way, find a way to interact with everybody, even when they're not presenting a show or something. So again, um, Donkey is, is, is wildly considered a, a, a great human being and a great cruise director, and I'm sure he is. The one knock on him would be, I would like to see him more. I would just like to see him out walking about. Um, almost every cruise line, or almost every cruise that I've been on with Carnival, I will just casually see the cruise director somewhere on the ship, just walking around, having a casual conversation with passengers, things like that, and that just wasn't the case for Donkey. So that is my one knock. But um, Donkey still gets a like. And again, everybody that had interaction with him really said they liked him. And just a second note, I had mentioned um, Travis uh, previously. He and his fiance, Alyssa, were on the Carnival Horizon for over two months. And when I met Travis, it was nearing the eight week period that he had been on the ship. And he had told me about all the people and all the relationships that he had built around, you know, all the people that, that, that on the ship and how much they were going to miss each of those people. And you know who he hadn't met yet? Donkey. Donkey had no idea that him and his fiance Alyssa had been on the ship for two months. That's, uh, that's my point. So, um, so good cruise director, 
but that is an area that, that could be improved with donkey. So um, start with that, but I, and <laughs> that probably sounded a little bit more negative than a bit positive. But again, um, people have said really good things about donkey. So I'm giving them a like, even though I didn't get to experience it quite as much, but I did leave some constructive criticism. So donkey, if you see this, nothing personal. Everybody says you're a great guy. Just try to be a little bit more out in the open where everybody can uh, see exactly what a great guy you are. Okay, so let's move on. The ship at, as a whole, Carnival Horizon, continues to be one of my favorite ships. I think the Mardi Gras has taken that honor, but Carnival Horizon is a beautiful ship, beautiful decor. Of course, they have, it's a, it's a newer ship, so they have a lot of the new bells and whistles, like they have the IMAX theater, they have the Thrill Theater, they have the Sky Ride, they have the nice Waterworks Park and a nice Serenity Deck and, and a lot of those things that, you know, that, that make it enticing. They have the Teppanyaki Grill. Um, they have Guy's Pig and Anchor, which is a new addition. Uh, the, um, the Horizon was the first ship to get the Guy's Pig and Anchor. So there is a lot of new amenities. And then the one big amenity that I have never taken advantage of up until this point was the Havana area. Okay, and this was the first time I booked a room in the Havana area. Not only did I book it for the first week of the back-to-back, -back, but also the second week with my wife Anita to uh, celebrate our anniversary. And it was wonderful. For those of you that haven't stayed in the Havana area, uh, the Vista class ships got it right. So if you go on the Carnival Vista, if you go on the Carnival Horizon, or if you go on the Carnival Panorama, what you will see is a strikingly similar feature, which at the back of the ship, there's a nice sized pool. And on each side of that nice sized pool, there are two hot tubs. You also have a generous seating area. Now, what's unique about this area is it's only available for for people that book in the Havana section. So they give you wristbands and such that every time you go back there, you're supposed to have a little wrist, wristband to show that you are part of the Havana uh, bookings for that particular cruise. And they basically have, you know, a security person back there and anybody that goes through the, that door, they're gonna look at your wrist and see that you have the corresponding wristband. If you do not, they're gonna politely ask you to leave. So what happens is you end up with a pool that is not crowded and you end up meeting a group of people that you can kind of become friends with and hang out with for the week and get to know, know one another and just have a, a good time hanging out. Not only that, but you have your own personal bar and personal bartenders. Now, anybody is allowed to go to the Havana bar. So on one side, you have the outdoor area of the of Havana bar. That is only for people in the Havana bar section. On the opposite sides, on the indoors, anybody can access that part of the Havana bar um, and uh, you know, order a drink from there, whatever it is. So if you'd like a Cuban iced tea, you don't have to book in the Havana section to get a Cuban iced tea. You can still get that. You just can't go outside and enjoy the pool and hot tubs in that private area there. Now, uh, there is a premium, uh, price upgrade, I guess you could say, to get into that area. And um, so many people I'd read the reviews prior to going and said, oh, it's so worth it. This is the only place we'll ever book, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? Because that's a lot of money. That's a big jump in price. But um, it is something that, that I would definitely recommend you try out if you're trying to decide on whether, well, should we book this balcony or should we book this interior Havana? You know, I might take an interior Havana over a balcony. I know that sounds crazy, but if you're somebody that's going to utilize that outside pool area, you are going to enjoy it probably more than you would enjoy your balcony. Unless you're somebody that just sits out on the balcony all the time, I might say it might be worth the trade-off. So give it some thought, those of you that are considering booking in the Carnival Horizon. Okay. Let's get to the entertainment next. All right, so I am a big playlist supporter, playlist production supporter. I really admire all the singers and all the dancers that perform for you on a weekly basis. 
and they put their hearts and soul into almost every production. I, I just really am captivated by the looks on their faces and how serious they take each and every performance when they do these performances twice a day. And, you know, each cruise, they're doing the same show over and over and, you know, twice a day. It's, it's to, to see how much they appreciate their craft and, and put their hearts in the craft is, is really something that, that I can get a great deal of joy out of. Um, now, three of their shows I'm a big, big fan of on one ship. Usually I'm a fan of one show or two shows on a particular ship. This one has three that I really like. So Soulbound is one of the three shows, and that is a kind of like a spookier type theme, but you know, they have a lot of, uh, you know, themes around, you know, spooky kind of voodoo type of stuff. And then the next one that I'm a big fan of is Vintage Pop. Now Vintage Pop is based at least in dress and apparel and costumes and things like it's set back in the 1920s, but they sing modern songs and then they put a 1920s twist on each of these modern songs along with the apparel to give it that 1920s feel. So it's a really fun production and there's this one scene um, that I'm a big, big fan of where, you know, the lead female uh, singer is, is basically looks like she has a feathery gown that's all bright red and it's really just a bunch of people holding feathers but it makes it look almost like she's in a giant gown and uh, you know it's kind of a sultry kind of seductive type of song or whatever but um, the colors and the costume and the, the, the whole scene setup is, is really really cool and that vintage pop and I will say the female lead for this particular cast that I was on is exceptional. One of the best female leads that I've seen. I just came off the Mardi Gras and I would say as a whole, that entire cast was the best overall that I'd seen. Um, this female lead could, yeah, she was something special. And then there, there was another uh, female that I thought was very good and a couple of male singers were good, but the one particular female um, lead in this cast on the Carnival Horizon was exceptional. So uh, I wish I would have gotten her name, but um, you will see in my videos right here to my side who I'm talking about. That is the young lady. And uh, so the final production, Celestial Strings. Now Celestial Strings has grown so much fanfare that it's actually being performed on more than one ship. It came out for the first time on the horizon but it got such, um, such great reviews that it's gone on to the Panorama and the Mardi Gras as well. And it might even be on another ship that I don't know about, but I know for sure it's on those three ships. Um, if you are on any of those ships, but especially if you're on the horizon, make a point to go see Celestial Strings. As you can see from my video, I make sure I get a front row seat or a seat very near the front row. Um, so I can enjoy and experience, you know, all the, um, you know, uh, singers and dancers up close because like I said, they put on such a great production to get a, you know, VIP front row seat, um, you know, something like that in a real theater on Broadway or something would cost you hundreds of dollars. Here it costs you nothing but getting in line early. Um, if the doors open at say 7.15, get there at 6.50. You know, get there 20, 25 minutes, grab a drink and sip on your drink for 20, 25 minutes as you talk with, with the group that you're with or your spouse. And uh, when the doors open, rush down and grab that front row seat and you'll thank me for it. Okay, so um, aside from the Playlist Productions, you know, you also have Love and Marriage, which is a very funny show that's hosted by the cruise director, in this case, Donkey. Um, they're all very similar. If you've been to one, you, you kind of know what to expect. You're gonna laugh a lot. They're gonna embarrass the heck out of the uh, the contestants up on the stage, but it's all in good fun. And um, if you haven't seen a Love and Marriage show, I think you'll enjoy that quite a bit. In addition, the live music. Now, I'm always a fan of the violin trio. It's not something that I listen to on the radio, but when I'm in a, on a cruise, um, it's something that I definitely enjoy sitting down for 10 or 15 minutes and listening to the violin trio just do their thing. And, uh, you know, they're so talented 
and yeah so um you know grab a drink sit down listen to the violin trio when they're performing live in one of the sections of the ship and just sit back and enjoy it uh the havana bar area you know that is you know where they play a lot of the latin themed music and and a lot of people will be dancing the night away to doing some salsa or whatever other Latin uh, type dance you might find back there and really enjoying some live music there. Ocean Plaza, they'll be playing more cover type songs, you know, back from the, the 70s all the way up to today, playing some music that are big hits that people will get to enjoy and remember fondly. So uh, the live music is always good. Uh, what, did, what did I leave out? Oh, the Punchline or Comedy Club, of course. So, you know, some people are big, big, big fans of comedy, and obviously you'll see those long, long lines of people waiting to get in to enjoy some live comedy. And the live comedy that I did see was very funny. Um, now, I will say this, uh, you know, try to really study your Carnival Hub app and plan out your evenings accordingly because you don't want to miss, say, a Celestial Strings just for the sake of going to a comedy. Um, you know, oftentimes the, the comedy will have two different shows. So, you know, if, if it means you have to go to dinner really early or grab a quick bite to eat so you can see the playlist production and the comedy, make a point to do it. Those th three playlist productions, again, I think you'll really, really enjoy each of those. And you can still enjoy your comedy at the same time. So, um, Take advantage of that. Okay, Piano Bar. That is one other entertainment area that people uh, genuinely like to go to, you know, on from cruise to cruise. And for those people that like to go to the Piano Bar, you know this better than anyone. It's all about the person behind the piano. Now, I will say this. Um, the first week, I was on an eight-day cruise from July 23rd to the 31st. And there was this um, black gentleman there. I think his name was Raul, I want to say. And he was excellent. Excellent. He would have that piano bar packed almost every day. He would have people standing up on the side, dancing, everything. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, my wife came on July 31st. And they changed the piano bar person. Um, I'm not going to mention the gentleman's name. He just didn't live up to the guy that was there the week before, uh, Raul. So, uh, it was noticeably less crowded. Um, you know, people weren't quite having the time that they had in the previous eight days that we had gone on there, but you know, um, there are some people still enjoying themselves. So, uh, piano bar can be really good or it can be kind of good. It just kind of depends. But um, overall, definitely would give that a like as well. Now, that pretty much covers the entertainment. So let's jump into the staff. Now, depending on what you are into, you may be somebody that's into, I don't know, just the Serenity deck and relaxing and things like that. Um, me, myself, I enjoy just enjoying the evening. Now, that obviously contains a lot of entertainment. Sometimes that uh, contains a trip to the casino for an hour or two, playing some craps or some blackjack. And then a lot of times it will be something like, you know, uh, enjoying my friends and people that I've met on the cruise ship at a bar like Alchemy or Guy's Pig and Anchor. And I mentioned those two in particular because that's where I spent the bulk of my time when I went to go get a drink. Um, Alchemy Bar, three bartenders that are big, big favorites of mine. Anna Maria, who my wife and I have cruised with several, several times. She is probably the most recognized female alchemist in the entire Carnival fleet. Um, she was great, as always, and uh, had a lot of fun with her. Nelson was the first time that I had gotten the opportunity to cruise with him. Now I've cruised with him twice, two weeks in a row. And then Boyan. Um, now, those of you that are subscribed to me, and while I mention that, 
please hit the like and subscribe button. If you've gotten this far into the video, you are 20 minutes in and guess what? That means you like it well enough to hit the like button. So pause this video right now, hit that like, and while you're at it, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button and uh, I will be forever in your debt. Well, maybe not forever in your debt, but I'll be in your debt for today at least. Um, and I will be uh, thankful for forever, at least until you unsubscribe, so don't do that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so um, Anna Maria, Nelson, and Boyan, and Boyan, as I was about to say, um, he was with me on the Carnival Valor. He's a senior bartender on the Carnival Valor, along with another senior bartender named Nico, and they went with us on a couple of our bar crawls, <coughs> and you could see them walking around in the background if you go back and check out those bar crawl videos. He's excellent as well. He recognized me right away and um, served me up a lot, a lot of great drinks on these two weeks that I was on the Carnival Horizon. Now, I will say this. Um, I didn't always like the guys pig and anchor with the exception of their Bloody Marys. Their Bloody Marys are to die for. You should always, 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 if you like Bloody Marys, go to uh, guys pig and anchor and get yourself a Bloody Mary. Um, they are out of this world there. I mean, they put like a quarter pound of bacon on top of a celery, olives. I mean, it's not just the garnishes that they put on it, but they uh, they marinate all these veggies in Tito's vodka. And that's the base of your Bloody Mary right there before they put the Bloody Mary mix and all the goodies in there. So uh, the Bloody Marys are to die for a guy's pig and anchor. But I will say this, the menu of drinks they have are not necessarily my favorite. Like I like the menu, the catalog of drinks that are on the menu at the Alchemy Bar much better. But I will say this, Christian and Alexandra and a lot of the bartenders that work at Guy's Pig and Anchor, they make a lot of drinks off the menu that are exceptional. So for example, the steakhouse is typically the noted for their watermelon martinis. That's one of their signature drinks. And it's a great drink. I, I always order it less sweet because I don't like the, the sweetness so much, but it's very refreshing, very good. Um, and I'll go to the steakhouse, but they can also make it at um, Alchemy, but usually Alchemy doesn't have watermelon. Um, you know, they can put the watermelon in syrup and everything. Guy's Pig and Anchor almost always has watermelon available and they will make you a nice watermelon martini. Now, there's another watermelon type drink on the Guy's Pig and Anchor menu that is made with mezcal. I'm not a mezcal fan. I mean, if you're a mezcal fan, you might really like it. The other thing that you'll really like at Guy's Pig and Anchor, if you're a bourbon fan or a rum fan, they some, have some top-notch bourbons and rums. So if you are a bourbon or a rum fan, go to Guy's Pig and Anchor. Uh, say hi to Christian and Alexandra for me. And, you know, tell them Coach said hi. But uh, they are two exceptional bartenders. You will be in good hands with both of them. So those five individuals in particular, uh, my Havana bartenders, Louis and Alberto, they were awesome. Got to experience them for a couple weeks and they were just great. And then I had a couple great cabin stewards and Claudius and Webster for the two weeks that I was aboard Havana. So I wanted to thank them. Guest services did a very good job. The wait staff, there was one particular um, waitress in the piano bar, I believe her name was Maria. She was very cool. There was honestly a lot of very cool, um, you know, wait staff people and, and just great staff overall. Um, I can't, you know, Oscar's another guy, another bartender that, you know, I've cruised with in the past that's been very good. And um, Nicola, Nicola is actually going to be jumping off the horizon and getting the celebration ready. And he's uh, been an alchemist in the past and, and worked in a lot of the bars, but uh, he's a top-notch bartender as well. And I had a, converse, a good, couple good conversations with him. So I think you'll be very happy with the staff overall on the horizon. So you have that to look forward to. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty, the drinks and the food. I've made reference to a couple drinks. Okay, so if this is your first cruise on Carnival, make sure that you know and make note of those bars that I just mentioned. Your um, Alchemy Bar, your Guy's Pig and Anchor, and even your Havana Bar. Havana Bar's got a really good drink called Cuban Iced Tea. You might wanna try that out. 
Um, the guys picking an anchor, I would suggest the watermelon martini. They also have this drink that is not on the menu. Well, the watermelon martini isn't on the menu either, but um, they make a key lime pie drink. Not, not the dessert, but the actual drink. And it tastes amazingly just like key lime pie. So if you're into a little bit sweeter drinks and you love the taste of key lime pie, go ahead and give that um, that drink a try at Guy's Pig and Anchor. They also make some other dessert type drinks like a pineapple upside down cake or something. I didn't try that one or maybe I tried just a sip of it and uh, it was good, but I really did like that key lime pie because I'm a key lime pie fan. Um, so try those out. And then they can make you other drinks that aren't on the menu. So if there's some ingredients or liquors that you don't necessarily like and on the menu, um, a guy's pig and anger, don't think that they can't make some adjustments for you to make the drink be just like you would like it, similar to what the Alchemy Bar does. Now the Alchemy Bar, if you've never been there, if this is your first Carnival Cruise, make sure, make sure you go to the Alchemy Bar. Um, you're gonna have a wonderful time. The Alchemists are very engaging and you know personable and they joke around with you and talk with you and it's just kind of fun watching them work you know shaking up the drinks and putting all the ingredients and handcrafting them to, to turn out this this perfect cocktail for you and everybody just seems very laid back and has a good time sitting at the bar so that is an experience in itself uh piano bar like i said depending on the pianist um you know i mean you could have a really great time there as well uh, but yeah, check out those bars. The Atrium Bar was very good. The Tides Bar, if you're enjoying some pool time, is a good place to go um, if you're not booked in the Havana area, for example. And uh, Blue Iguana Agave Pineapple Tea is a nice drink to get. And the Blues Patron um, Margarita. And then at Red Frog, I would suggest Red's Rum Treasure is really another uh, good drink that I'm very fond of. Okay, so that is for the drinks. And then finally, the food. Now the MDR, the times that I did go to the main dining room, I was very pleased with the main dining room. Very pleased overall with the quality of food and the quality of service. Um, not everybody has said that, and I know not everybody's experience is the same, but to be fair, when I was in the MDR, the service was good and the food was good. Okay, the deli, I've always been a fan of the deli. Um, the, deli did, the deli did not disappoint once again. One thing I will say, um, the sandwiches that I did get, and at least the ones with the shredded meat, seem to be lacking in the amount of meat in comparison to past um, sailings. Now, that gentleman that I mentioned that had been on the horizon for two months, he said the uh, it was very inconsistent over the two months. Like he'd go and get some deli sandwiches and they loaded it with meat and then there were other times where they didn't. So that might just be the server who is, you know, giving a little less meat or a little bit more. Um, so just when you get it, you know, maybe ask for a little more meat if, if you think they're, they're shorting you or whatever. And they usually are very accommodating and they'll throw some extra meat on there for you to make the sandwich just right. Now the steakhouse, the steakhouse, I always loved the steakhouse and the steakhouse was very good. Once again, I went twice um, once uh, each cruise right, thank you. and it was very, very good. Now, most times I would say, you know, considering the cost and, you know, the value and, and the taste and everything, I'm giving the steakhouse close to a 10 rating out of 10. Now, um, the only difference I can say in the steakhouse is still very good, it's still very much worth the money. The the last three times I've gone to the steakhouse, it hasn't been quite that, wow, oh my God, this is so good. It's been, oh, this is really, really, really good, but not, oh my God, good, you know? Um, so take that for what you will. I'm still giving it two big likes. Um, I don't know whether the, the steak was a little less prime than it used to be, um, but it seems like that's, that's where I'm missing a little bit of the uh, the quality, I guess you could say, just went down just a touch. Um, I don't know whether it's just, you know, I got some steaks that weren't quite the premium quality they had been in the past. You know, it's just a notch down or whatever. It's still, still well worth the money, so don't let that dissuade you from going. Uh, the buffet, I usually avoid the buffet, but I did go 
for an omelet and I did go for breakfast a couple times and it was fine. You know, it was good. It wasn't great, but you know, I'm not a buffet person. Um, I would highly suggest you take the time. You know, I know some people just want to wear tank tops and flip flops and stuff like that. And that's why you don't go to the main dining room, but, but it was really, really worth, uh, you know, throwing on a pair of khaki shorts and a t-shirt to get that service in the main dining room and a little higher quality food. In my opinion, the food is of higher quality and better um, in the main dining room. So that would be my suggestion, but it was good the couple times that I went. And then finally, the other specialty venue that we went to was Gigi's. Um, and Gigi's was very good. I'm a big fan of their pork belly. That was very good once again. Their chicken soup is amazing. I get that. It doesn't matter if it's 100 degrees outside. The hot chicken soup is worth it because of the, you know, the, the, the complexity and the taste of that soup is just so good. Um, the creme brulee is awesome. I did get the Wagyu beef this time. Normally I get the Kung Pao chicken and the Wagyu beef, I mean, I know it has that, that I guess, reputation of being premiere and all that but it's it's a softer beef the way they prepare it and honestly you know, I kind of regretted uh, getting that instead of the Kung Pao chicken um, but you know overall Gigi's again that's another one where I feel it's it's well worth the money it's like 16 bucks a person it's not going to break the bank and you're going to get a really good meal some really good appetizers and uh, you know it's a good dining experience as well so that is about it um, as you notice, I didn't have a whole lot to dislike about the horizon. I love cruising. I just really love cruising and I tend to find the silver lining, I guess you could say in most situations, but that all of those opinions were my own. Um, Carnival certainly does not, you know, help me out in any way, shape or form, uh, monetarily or whatever. So they are not paying me to give these good reviews or anything like that. That is just my honest opinion. So I hope that helps you in some way. And, um, you know, whenever your cruise is, I hope you have a fabulous cruise. Um, I'll just remind you one more time, if you could please hit that like button and please hit the subscribe button along with that notification bell so you can get more videos like this in the future. And uh, like I always say, it's like, you know, sometimes you get those magazine offers, right? Where it's like, we'll give you the magazine for free for a year or $5 for a year. And you say, okay, I'll do it. And then you realize you got about 15 magazines stacked up and you haven't read one of them, right? And you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. Hit the subscri subscription button. There's no magazine stacking up, you know? It's not like you're gonna get flooded. Your email uh, is gonna get flooded or anything like that. It's just, uh, I'll be higher up in your feed, I guess you could say. So you can choose to watch a future video or not. It costs nothing to hit that subscription button. So hit subscribe for me, hit that like button, and I will be very appreciative. It will help me a lot more than it'll hurt you. I promise you that. So um, have an awesome, awesome cruise if you're going on the horizon soon. And uh, please put in the comments um, if there's something you feel I missed or if you had an experience similar or a, uh, an experience very different from my own, if you disagree with anything that I say. And um, I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'm always there to respond to them and I will respond. And I um, hope you have a great rest of your day and week and month and year. And we'll see you soon, everybody. I just can't get away from a good time